Welcome to our 33rd edition of Cool Tools, where I get to show you some of the best and most useful tools I have here in my workshop. With only one exception, everything I'll show you today I've used for a long time, years, not months. So these are opinions based on experience. The one exception is something I got a few months ago, but I'm already really familiar with it. We're going to have to move quickly to get everything in, so please use the links below in the video description or pinned to the top of the comment section so you can learn more about anything you see. Not everything is on Amazon. I tried to link to some small businesses too. And as always, if a sponsor is involved, it's disclosed at the beginning of the video and down by the links. Some of these tools are a little bit pricey, but others are just a few bucks, so there should be something for everyone. If you see something you're not interested in, or you want to find a specific segment again, you can skip around using the chapters bar at the bottom of the video. We have a lot of really cool tools to talk about, so let's get started. A good sturdy tool rest is such an essential grinding accessory that it's a wonder why most grinders come with such bad ones. Years ago I upgraded to a solid, large surfaced rest, and I am so glad I did. It provides a nice stable platform that can be set to a precise angle and will remain rock solid as I work. All that extra steel surface also serves as a heat sink to draw heat out of the tool and help keep it cooler. I've actually owned two different aftermarket rests over the years, and I think it would be helpful to compare them so you know why I prefer the one I do. This is the well-known one-way Wolverine system tool rest. It's rock solid, and it's fully adjustable both in distance from the wheel and angle of the platform. This is the Kodiak tool rest. It's also rock solid and fully adjustable, but it's designed so the platform can be tilted without changing the distance between the rest and the wheel. I love that because I think it makes finer adjustments easier. The Kodiak rest also wraps around the wheel. This gives you added support and it makes it possible to utilize the side of a CVN wheel to achieve a flat grind instead of the common hollow grind. Of course, you wouldn't grind on the side of a regular wheel because they aren't designed for side loads the way that solid aluminum CBN coated wheels are. The Kodiak tool rest includes a system of positive angle stops. Now these are meant for turning tools. Those angles are measured a little differently from chisel and plain iron angles. But the platform can be set to any angle. Perhaps the most clever feature of the Kodiak rest is the surface tracking system that may be used with a little carriage to hold the tool perpendicular to the stone as you move it side to side. They also have an angled carriage for grinding skews. Like the Wolverine, the Kodiak is attached to a steel rod that slides into a mounting base as part of a larger sharpening system for things like turning tools. But unlike the Wolverine, the Kodiak is also available as a standalone tool rest that mounts on the bench right in front of your grinder. That's something that's only possible because of how the platform pivots so the rest can be fixed. It doesn't have to be moved forward and back in front of the wheel. But the best part of the Kodiak rest is it comes from a small business run by some of the best people I have ever met in this industry. I really hope you'll visit Ken Rizza and his staff at woodturnerswonders.com, which I'll link to below this video, and check out the Kodiak tool rest as well as all the other cool stuff they have to offer. These anodized aluminum straight edges appeared in a Cool Tools video way back in 2018, but they're getting a repeat performance for our new viewers because they're still one of the best purchases I have ever made at a woodworking show. Honestly, I've used the crap out of these things in the last five years or so. I believe they're ground to the same standards as the super expensive woodpecker straight edges, which is a thousand in, or one thousandth of an inch per foot. But these are about a third of the price. I use them for all sorts of things, especially setting up machines, jointer knives. I even use them as winding sticks to check a board for a twist. You don't have to go to a woodworking show to find them. Taylor Tools, which is another great family-owned business, has them on their website. They're black instead of gold, but they're exactly the same. Seriously, this is one of those tools that every shop should have. Check them out at the link below. As many of you know, I like to listen to audiobooks in the workshop. Usually I do this on my Isotunes earmuffs, which connect to my phone via Bluetooth, or earbuds. Sometimes people ask me if listening to audiobooks or music is too distracting and dangerous when using power tools. And my answer is there's a pause button right on the side that you can tap and turn off the music when you turn your saw on if that helps you focus. And then you're back to listening when the sawing's done. I find that by listening while I'm not using machines, I not only enjoy my shop time more, 
but I never find myself making that one or two quick cuts without protection because they're already on my head or with the earbuds that are in my ears. If you want to check them out, Isotunes is having a site-wide 20% off sale for the next three days only, and only with my discount code STUMPY20. Use the link below this video, I'll also put the code down there. It's only three days long. After that, you're back to my regular 10% off discount that I get for my viewers, and I'll put a link to that below as well, in case you're watching this four days from now. I'm not sure anything changed the way I work as much as my first good bandsaw did. I've had a bunch of bandsaws over the years, some good, some pretty awful. One of the best I've ever used appeared a couple years back in Cool Tools episode number 20. That was the Harvey Ambassador C14. It remains my everyday user still today. I wouldn't trade it for any saw in its class. But it's not the only bandsaw I own. In fact, I got a Harvey Alpha bandsaw right about the same time that I got the Ambassador model. I know it says Champion on the front. That's because it was called Champion back then. It's exactly the same as the current Alpha HW615. I keep this one set up for resawing with a wide blade. I understand that's a luxury. Most shops just don't have. I'm not saying you need two bandsaws. But I'm often asked how the two saws compare, and if I could own just one, which would it be? So here's a quick rundown. The Ambassador is a 14-inch saw, which refers to its throat capacity between the blade and the column. The Alpha has a little more capacity at 15 inches. They both have 14 inch resaw capacities and they have powerful 3 horsepower 220 volt motors. So either one could eat through a wide board standing on edge, no problem. They both have high quality blade guides that are easy to set without tools. They have tension release levers, dual dust collection ports and foot brakes, all the bells and whistles. They're both heavy duty saws with cast iron wheels, bulky frames and tables, but the Alpha version is just a beast. It weighs nearly 500 pounds, which is 100 pounds more than the Ambassador. Everything on it is bigger and more robust. I'm not saying the Ambassador is underbuilt. It is definitely not. Like I said, it's my everyday user. It's kind of a workhorse in the shop. I'm just saying that the Alpha may be a little overbuilt. It's as if it was designed to be worked hard all day long in a professional shop. It has no te problem tensioning a one inch wide blade. I've even had an inch and a quarter wide blade on it, which requires a massively stiff frame and heavy duty tensioning mechanisms. The table's also bigger too. It's about five inches deeper from front to back, which better supports boards when I resaw and gives me more, more room to work. But I think one of my favorite features is the fence. It's built like a table saw's fence on a square rail. This not only means it glides and locks easily, but it lifts right off the table, like a table saw's fence does, when you need it out of the way. It's a much easier process than the typical fences that run on the round bars. The aluminum extrusion on the fence also has higher support for wide boards on edge. Really, it's just a resawing machine. Again, you can resaw boards all day long on the Ambassador model. It has the power and capacity to do it, but I'm pretty sure I could mill a tree on the Alpha if I could just lift it up there. So if I could own only one, which would it be? Honestly, I think it'd be the Ambassador, which may sound strange after all the praise I just heaped on the Alpha, but the Ambassador does everything most people would want for about $1,000 less. It's just a great saw, and unless you have unlimited funds, it's what I'd probably recommend to most of my viewers. Unless you have the extra cash and you want the best of the best, or you have a professional workshop. I've honestly never seen anything like the Alpha. It took me by surprise when I saw it at a woodworking show a few years ago. So if it's in your budget, go for it. Really, you can't go wrong with either saw. I'll link to both below this video so you can check them out for yourself. We've talked about this one in the past as well, but a lot of viewers struggle with humidity in their shops and the resulting rusty tools. I had a similar problem in my old shop. I noticed some corrosion developing on my router bits, and I knew I had to nip it in the bud because I had too much invested in tools to just let them rust. So I started using Z-Rust Vapor Capsules. These emit a rust-inhibiting vapor that controls rust in enclosed spaces, like drawers and boxes and cabinets. They make a wide range of products, including capsules that you can throw in a drawer, they have little tabs that you can toss in a box with a tool, or whole bags that are treated and ready for any object to slide inside them. They even have rust inhibiting machine covers. If you have a humidity or rust problem, get some. They really work. Check them out at the link below. 
The Bridge City Tools Universal Gauge is another really clever idea for folks who like and have the budget for ultra premium tools. It comes in a left hand and a right hand version, though they're also sold separately and you can do most everything with just one. As the name suggests, the Universal Gauge does a lot of different things. It's a tri-square, it's a marking gauge, it's a center finding rule, it's a depth gauge, it's a height gauge, it's a protractor, it's a bevel gauge, it can set precise miter angles. The magnetic bottom is handy for machine setups. In fact, there are a bunch of little features that show a great deal of thought that went into the design. It's available in either metric or imperial versions. It's made out of anodized aluminum, and it is just a bunch of good ideas combined into one clever tool. Check it out at the link below. Here's another oldie but a goodie. This is something I think I use every single day. It's my Stanley 10-foot pocket size measuring tape. How often are you outside the shop and you need to measure something? All the time, right? I love this little tape because it's long enough to be useful, yet it's less than a half inch thick, so it fits in my pocket without feeling like I'm carrying around a rock. In fact, I keep it in that little watch pocket in my pants, which I don't need for a pocket watch since I'm not an old-timey train conductor. You'll forget it's in there until someone inevitably says, how wide is that? And you get to pull out your tape measure and save the day. Honestly, get one of these. They're inexpensive. This one has lasted me five years or so, and it's still good as new. I'll link to it below this video. So that's it for this edition of Cool Tools. Don't forget to use the links below the video. We'll have another Cool Tools in about two months. See you then.